welcome to Vegas, where they do it bigger and better than any other city when it comes to the big time fights. We're at the Thomas and Mack Center. All the talk, all the hype, now the fight. Round one, scheduled for ten. Teddy, I'm assuming many times in your career, you were training a fighter who did not have the reach compared to his opponent. When you were training him in the build-up to that fight, what did you try to cement into his head? The one thing that I had told him is something I had to tell myself, is that we had options. The first was, of course, the traditional way. Tuck up good defensively, move your head, and work your way in. Slip a punch, and now all of a sudden you're closer. You take his height away. The other is to step up and get sort of enticed the taller fighter to come in and be short. See how he targets that hook? Focus! Halfway through this round here. That's a damaging jab. I know it doesn't seem like much, but that's a good, strong jab by Smith. Nice work with the overhand right. Hart's defense. Is it ever good? Look at how easy he's able to block those punches. Good flush shot upstairs. Final 10 seconds of round number one. Right hand downstairs. This round comes to an end. A round in which this fighter threw a lot of punches, didn't land a lot of punches. I'll tell you, what advice can you give to him if you're the trainer? Well, first of all, deal with the psychological part. Joe, don't forget, 75% of this game is psychological. Don't let him get discouraged because even though he's not going to say nothing, in his head he's starting to get discouraged. Just say to him, hey, listen, you're going to catch him. Let's shorten him up a little bit. And you know what? He's moving his head, so go to the body because now you're going to hit him a little in the body because the body's not moving. Didn't get it done going to the body there. Step back, then the counter punch by the Beast from the East. Very similar to what you see Floyd Mayweather do. You know, make a miss, pull that shoulder back, and then come right back with the counter. 90 seconds to go here in this round. The Beast swinging and missing like he's at bat right there. That punch was nowhere near his opponent. You see what he can do when he sends that right to the head. Smith's right hand did a nice job that time. That worked well for him. And now he's targeting upstairs. Nice block by Hart. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. A little head hunting with the right. The beast is knowledge of the game is showing through. Three ways to defend. One of them is to block. He did it there well. He missed with that head shot. Joe and Teddy with you here in between rounds. A round in which, boy, he really just dominated his opponent. Teddy, he's got to think things could be coming to a sensational ending for him when he gets off the stool here. Well, he's showing that to you right now. I'm looking at him right now, and he's starting to get up. There's a couple seconds left. There's probably five seconds left before he has to get up, and he's getting up early. That shows you right what you're talking about. He can He's chomping at the bit. He's confident. Blocking that punch. Very good defense by Hound Dog. Let's see some more head movement. Not Let's able to connect with the uppercut. Smith crushed by a 
huge uppercut. A stinging uppercut by Hart. Accurate uppercut after taking a shot of his own. Smith's giving his opponent headaches here now. He's throwing punches, but he's able to block them away. to improve that accuracy, missed with the headshot. Move! Ten seconds to go in this third round. Like your body Hearts up a round here after three rounds on Teddy's scorecard, but really nobody has distinguished themselves to any great amount so far. Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counterpuncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head much. He can time him, he can counter him. Beat him to the first. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. Scored well up great. top. And out of nowhere, things can turn like that, Teddy. Everything was looking good, and now it's looking bad for him. Well, that's exactly why, because nothing was coming at him. His opponent wasn't throwing back. He got a little lax, and he paid a price. Come on. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. Halfway through round number four. Good jab by Hart. He brings it right back. Big shot upstairs. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Hound Dogs giving his opponent fits right here. His head movement is making for such an elusive target. Yes, it is. Now the opponent has to make an adjustment. He has to realize that he's finding air more than he's finding any surface up top. So go downstairs to the place that's not moving, down to the body. That is starting to take away some of that head movement. The clean shot with the left hand that he was looking for by Smith. Solid right by the Beast from the East. Here's one for you now, he says. Right back with the left hand. See him holding on. Oh, you see him with the left of the head there? Up top with the right hand. Right to the body. Hound Dog's putting a smile on his corner man's face right there and frustrating his opponent with that jab. Halfway into round number five here and just grabbing on to his opponent. The Beast is way off the mark. That punch didn't have a chance. Come on, kid, focus.
biting jab by Hound Dog. Hound Dog's opponent's probably looking at him right now saying, wow, you're not changing anything up. You know, he got to him moments ago. Now he's got the same style that he's looking at again. Yeah, but he got to him moments ago. Got to him one time. I think right now it's too early to all of a sudden throw everything out the window. But look for an adjustment if things don't change. If he can't get away from those punches, if he keeps having problems, he gets... Oh, that's got to hurt. He goes down in the later stages of this round. He's going to try to survive it. Catches a lucky break. Saved by the bell here at the end of the round, Teddy. Yeah, right away you're thinking, you know, where do I spend my time right now? You want to tell him things that can help him, but he is really groggy right now, so you got to get him clear-minded first. He's punching away even though he's been stunned. Good block there by Hart. Hart keeping his guard up very, very well. Teddy. Does it help to have the speed that he has? Uh, sure. Anytime you have speed and you can put it into the equation where whatever you're doing, it has to be technically right, but now you put speed, you're doing it even better. You're doing it at a higher level. Teddy, what does he need to do right here? He has no balance. His legs aren't underneath him. Well, you know he can't move because he's going to fall on his own or the referee's going to stop him. So believe it or not, he's either got to grab or he's got to stand on a rope, stay right in front of the guy and move his head to make a miss. He can't use his legs. Took a shot. Now he gives a left. He is in a real, real bad spot right now. Maybe a punch or two and he could be on the deck. Oh, boy, he's got to get right to the inside. Just go bear hug this guy. Either that, Joe, or maybe as big a long shot as this might be. His opponent now is coming in there, not worrying about him at all. And he's leaving himself a little bit open. Maybe he can land the bomb. He can land a lucky shot. Keep working the jab. That's a big hook to the head by Smith. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. Oh, and he's got something for him himself, and it's a left hand. Go out and get it. Go out and fight. Here we go, action to start the seventh round. Smith's hoping to try to carry some of that momentum from the last round into this round. Now he's down on your scorecard, but he turned the corner a bit in that last stanza. Well, you hear him talking about, you know, baby steps. You know, you gotta crawl before you can walk. Well, right now he's taking those little baby steps. He got one round under his belt, a good round. Steady the ship a little bit. Now go get another round. The beast, his work rate is very high. I looked at the punch stats and you can see that he's a busy guy. I don't think he's an effective guy though. A lot of these aren't landing. Well, you have a reason to think that, Joe. Guess what? I agree, they're not landing. Oh, he's hurt. He was hurt right there, but now he's grabbing on like it's a life preserver. And he's gonna have to stay there if he's gonna get through these rapids. At the halfway point of round seven. Not able to land the headshot. Step back counter punch there. Oh, he's hurt right there. He is hurt. So in this kind of situation, it's kind of like a wounded animal. Yeah, you could go after, but you better be careful because he'll strike out when you don't expect it. Takes one, gives one. The right hand scores well. Took a shot. Now he gives a left. Scored well upstairs with the right hand. Lands a big hook.
Don't let him breathe. He's hurt. The Beast's in a tough spot right here. It's not just that he trails on your scorecard as we begin round number eight. It's that he's damaged goods as it is. Well, you said it very well, Joe. It's not just about tonight. It's about tomorrow and many other nights. Whether or not you let him keep going if you damage his future. Thought he had his target, but way off to the side with the uppercut. The Beast's on the receiving end of a very good counter punch. The halfway point of round number eight. Not what he was looking for. That's a miss right there by Hound Dog. The Beast, his blocking ability, is doing well for him there. Oh, he's in bad shape here. He's stunned, and he's wobbly. The only thing he has going for him is he's not a fighter that uses his legs anyway, and you can't use him right now. He's a guy that likes to move his head. He's got to start doing that. Try to cement those feet down the best he can and get some head movement. Turn around. You never know what's going to happen in this game. You're never supposed to take anything for granted, never assume anything. They tell you that in life. In the ring, you get taught that real fast. He got caught by a big shot. Blocks that punch. The Beast throwing a lot of punches right here, but not a lot of hearts hurt from that. Oh boy, he is stunned badly. He is staggered and hurt and could go down. Teddy, what do you got to be yelling for encouragement if you're the corner? Well, if it was a baseball game, I'd be yelling for rain <laughs> right now. I, I want this stop. But what he has to really get is a way to clinch. You see, he comes over the top with that right hand, a real solid shot. He had his eyes set on the uppercut, but was unable to land it. Headbutt! Headbutt! A well-placed left hand up top. Hits him in the mug with the right. And you see what he can do when he sends that right to the head. Final 10 seconds. Good clean shot, returning fire. Well done by Hart. And that's the end of round nine. We hear about guys being calm and cool when the pressure's on. With that eye completely shut, the pressure is on. Yeah, this is where you're really ultimately being tested as a fighter, as a human being, as a man. Fighting, snapping shot by Hound Dog. That's a good probing jab that time by the Beast.
Smith's coming up with the answers, avoiding that punch. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. Hound Dog's defense is playing a prominent role in this fight, Teddy. Yes, it is, and specifically what it is is he has good fundamentals. He keeps those hands up real good, you know. They're attached, they're up around his chin, his elbow's in. You know, he has a real shell there that's not easy to penetrate. Smith's jab lands well. Well, that's the classic wet noodle foundation right there. He's on wobbly legs. Yeah, and it's not al dente. It's really, really wet noodles. See, that's what you want from his left hand. That's exactly what it should be doing, that left hand by Hound Dog. That's it. And they will bring it home in the last 10 seconds of this final round. Well, you should have your judge's license taken away if you don't see this one the obvious way, Teddy. And one of these judges dare go another direction with this. I want their picture up on a post office board. Most wanted poster. Yes, sir. Now, right now, what we want is to hear those obvious scorecards, so let's send it up to the ring. That's a well-earned victory by Hart. And it's nice to see when not only all three judges have it for him, but your scorecard agrees. Yeah, it is. That doesn't mean I'm going to hang out with these guys or go to dinner with them afterwards, but right now I'm going to take 